Life is about constant evolution. Always better today than we were yesterday. Welcome to The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. I'm your host, Scott Williams. And today, we are in Annapolis, Maryland, at the U.S. Naval Academy, speaking with the SEALs on the yard. And they are instructors and advisors to candidates that are coming through the Naval Academy that are ultimately headed toward BUDS and the SEAL training pathway. And we're speaking with one of the SEALs on the yard today, a member of the NSW program here. Welcome. Thank you. So let me just start out with uh, something really basic. Let's just start out and and describe for me, if you will, what is the SEAL screener? So the SEAL screener is used to assess the juniors here at the academy trying to go to BUDS. It's a 48-hour evolution where we test them physically, mentally, and we test their water competency. Describe some of the evolutions to me. I know some of it is a little bit of a secret sauce, but in, in general terms, what are we looking at? They're going to be doing the evolutions that they're going to see in BUDS. So they'll be doing log PT, boat PT. They'll be spending a lot of time in the water, just seeing how comfortable they are underwater, not tying, treading, and a bunch of push-ups. And so basically no sleep. Correct. And yep. they're just moving from one evolution to another. So it is a bit of a taste of hell week in a sense. Yep. So they'll they'll wake up on Friday morning and they'll do their entire day of school like normal. And then right when school gets out is when the screener kicks off. And they will continue that screener all the way up until Sunday morning. That's when we're totally secure. And here we are. It's... Uh, late March, and the weather is not exactly balmy like it was out in San Diego. What are we expecting for tonight, the weather? It's going to be lows in the 30s and highs in the 50s, and it's going to be dumping rain the whole time. Wow. Just how we like it. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's the worst possible day that could ever happen in San Diego, and it almost never happens. So they're, they're really getting smacked around tonight by the weather. That's going to be make, uh, make things mighty uncomfortable. When we look at the progress of potential candidates uh, for BUDS at the Naval Academy in general, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, for someone who's thinking about getting a commission coming through the Naval Academy and ultimately becoming a SEAL, what do those years look like for them? What can they expect? Okay, so... As a plebe, which is your, your fourth class year here, your freshman year mm-hmm. as a, at a normal college, there's not really much. We have an NSW mentorship program where they they get linked up with um, some of the first class, which are seniors who have made it through the pipeline uh, here at the academy and are waiting to go to BUDS. But their first look is really in between their third class and second class year, and that's going to be their um, a NSW PTE is where they go down to Virginia Beach for a week or two and they get to see what life is like at the teams. From there, they will go to the screener. At some point during their junior year, their third, their second class year, either in the fall or on in the spring. So we'll have approximately 100 people sign up for the fall screener and then an additional, say, 100 in the spring. So 200 people sign up for one of these screeners. Mm -hmm. We whittle that down, and we take our top 60 finishers, and then we will send them out to SOAS, SEAL Officer Assessment and Selection, in Coronado. They will go to that during their second class and first class summer, and we will take the top 30 finishers from SOAS, and those are who typically get selected for a BUDS billet. So out of an initial 200, we're going to whittle it down to about 30 or so that actually get sent to BUDS. Correct. And these are experiences, kind of steps that they've taken along the way from in between their, their freshman, sophomore year. I'm trying to keep this in civilian terms so everybody is following. Um, 
then again, um, the, the major test here of going through the screener, which is their junior year, um, and they have two opportunities to do that. And then if they get selected to go to SOAS, then they go down to SOAS, and that's during their senior year? That's in between junior and senior year during, during the, the summer. summer. Okay, right. And then if they're picked out of SOAS, then they complete their senior year at the academy, graduate, and then go down to BUTS. Correct. Correct. Right. So after they complete SOAS, all of the ones that finish will have an interview panel back here at the academy. And after that interview panel, their package will be briefed to a, a panel of SEALs down in Millington, Tennessee, who ultimately decide which 30 get picked. And that 30 is a rough number. The Naval Academy candidates are largely considered the cream of the crop. And I think one of the reasons is because we have so many different levels of screening here that you ultimately end up getting the best of the best candidates to make it down to buds. I mean, we've we've already talked about more than one interview panel and selection panel and test gate after test gate, and that's even before they show up at buds. Some of the other officer candidates don't have all of those opportunities, like ROTC uh, doesn't have that many opportunities. OCS certainly doesn't have that many opportunities. On the enlisted side, um, guys don't have those kinds of test gates to go through. Really, their first, you know, big test gate is showing up at at buds and going through orientation and all of that. So, we have high expectations for officers at NSW, and we end up getting some great candidates because of all of these selections. And you've been here for a while now, and you've seen a few of these screeners. Um, what would you say is probably the most important characteristic or quality that a candidate has that makes it through? Being able to take care of his boat crew and lead by example. So here at the Academy, They've had a structure for structured four years of a daily grind, which essentially is is what buds is, right? Mm-hmm. Except it's a little bit more physical at buds. It's not as much academic. So, if they get to go and show up at buds and they're already physically squared away, they've been preparing for buds their whole time that they're here. They've already been tested. They've already gone through interviews and can can speak the part. Now all they have to do is perform at buds and help every single other candidate who hasn't had the same training or been through the same pipeline get through. And I think that's what what makes them so successful. Clearly, you know, the grit, determination, resilience, um, what have you, is is a individual factor for getting through the screener in terms of the physical piece, the mental piece. But you guys are looking for leaders. And so we're you're going to be looking for that leadership even demonstrated out here at the screener tomorrow night. Absolutely. We could have the top physical guy here or girl. They could complete the entire screener, number one in every evolution, but if they're only concerned about themselves and aren't bringing their boat crew along, they're not going to get selected. Yeah, that's really important. And like you mentioned, we also have female candidates out here. Um, this is not the first screener that we've seen this, um, but we have a few this time as well. Um, so it's a reminder that the the training uh, pathway is open to anyone who can meet the standard. And uh, so we're going to see some of them uh, attempt this uh, test gate and, and see what works out. Okay, so if someone wants to come to the Naval Academy, obviously they're going to need to see an officer recruiter in their recruiting district. So find your MEP station, call down there, find out who the officer recruiter is, and they can guide you through the whole process of um, applying for a commission through the Naval Academy. And that's a whole thing. We won't get into that here. But once a person has done that, man or woman, um, and they arrive here, and then they find out, through perhaps meeting you or one of the other SEALs on the yard um, that there's a special warfare program that they could apply to. What happens then? What are the steps they need to take? They search for a senior mentor who has gone through the screener and 
we have a NSW mentorship program for that. So they should be getting involved there. And then they come to the SEAL program office and speak with one of the staff in that office. During their junior year, they will get an email saying, sign up for the fall screener or sign up for the spring screener. That is their t- turn to to sign up and then test themselves throughout our screener. That's really their first step in the process of going to BUDS and becoming a SEAL officer here at the academy. And ideally, their mentor would be giving them some clues on, hey, here's how you need to change your physical readiness program. So after class, maybe do some of these things to get ready for the screener. Correct. They can they can talk to their experience, what they did to prepare, and how they think they can best prepare. A couple things that we like to tell them, we're not just looking for the most fit people on the yard. We, we're looking for the whole package, all right? So that that, yes, it involves fitness and grit, but we're also looking for leadership skills, qualities. So people who who step outside their comfort zone, volunteer for all of the brigade leadership opportunities, the ones that work on, well on a team, a sports team, an extracurricular activity, whatever they're interested in is fine. I don't need you to be a varsity athlete, but I do need to see some sort of team ability where you can work well with the team and, and lead your peers. We also look at your your EQ and your IQ. We look at their GPAs, their order of merit, how they rank out in their class. And all of that stuff gets rolled into how we decide who gets selected. Yeah, I think it's important really to note that. Sure, there's the physical piece. There is always going to be the physical piece. Um, do you see any trouble spots for candidates that, that come through? Like, I'm, I'm talking about the physical part now. Are there any historically difficult um, evolutions that tend to slow down some of the candidates? Yep. So to get into the screener, you have to do a PST. And in that physical screening test, pull-ups is usually the evolution that most people fail at. And that mm. it's it's 10 pull-ups is the minimum to get in. And if you haven't been training pull-ups for a while, that is typically the the part that most people fail at during the PST. The best way that people can get started early is also swimming. So we spend 99.9% of our time on land. So that's natural to us. What people aren't used to is being in uncomfortable situations in the water, swimming, combat, side stroke. So if you don't know how to do that yet, the earlier you can get in the water, the more time you can spend in the water, the better. So what sets us apart in the SEAL community is we do things involved around the water, right? So the sooner you can get comfortable in that wet environment, the better you're going to do. Yeah. And adjusting the mentality of being uncomfortable, right? Correct. You have to welcome. It's not always going to be warm and cozy and, you know, sanitized. It's it's not a video game. Um, great. So we've got leadership as an extremely important factor in taking kind of the whole person approach and evaluation. We've got the physical piece, which is obvious, but we have areas there that we need to look at, pull-ups and combat side stroke in particular. Um, then we have also the academic piece, the mental piece. You got to know what you're doing around here and be smart and you are going to leave the academy with a degree of some sort so it's kind of important to keep your gpa up and all that demonstrate leadership through academics as well are there other qualities that define a good candidate coming out of here character is another huge thing that is hit here at the academy it's one of the main characteristics that we look at in an individual how they uphold themselves what their integrity is like, what their loyalty is like, and how they portray themselves around the yard, right? That's another key ingredient to being a good leader. All right. I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for joining us. No problem. And that'll conclude today's episode of The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. I'm Scott Williams. Until the next time. If you
been skating through, Bugs, so far. You will not do so anymore.